Planning, Zoning, and Building Committee to order. Let the minute taker please call the roll. Alderman Roy Wesley. Here. Alderman Sorrentino. Here. Alderman Jacob. Alderman Eugene Wesley. Here. Alderman Catalano. Here. Alderman Sismarski. Here. Alderman Messina. Here. Alderman Woods. Here. At a clerk forum. Next, uh, we have somebody in the audience that would like to say a few words, so we're going to let them uh, speak before we jump into the agenda. Shane uh, Selsky. Uh, uh, good evening, my name is Shane Solsky, and I am a senior at Fenton High School. This semester in criminal justice class, we have been studying the correctional system, and we are looking for ways to improve upon it. Recently, on November 15th, we took a trip to the DuPage County Jail to experience firsthand the environment uh, and life of an inmate. With this unit of study, we are trying to develop ways in which we can reform the current correctional system. Uh, a few of the issues we, we encountered while researching and visiting the DuPage County Jail included the lack of updates in building facilities, the structure of daily life for inmates, the inadequate rehabilitation programs, and the stark transition from inmate to citizen. Through our project and research, we have been able to construct ideas uh, for solutions to these dilemmas. Although these issues are just a tip of the iceberg, when we are dealing with these objects uh, in the correctional system. We hope that our solutions can better create, uh, can create a better tomorrow, not only for the inmates, but guards, families, and citizens as well. On December 18th, we are planning on uh, presenting our prototype for a new jail and correctional system to the public at our school. We would love to have you join us and evaluate our bid. With this project and class as a whole, we hope not to only learn about the criminal justice system, but to take action and reconstruct it for a more suitable method of corrections. Uh, my classmate, Kelvin Sanchez, is going to come forward with uh, details, and there will also be local officials, and we would like to extend an invite for you, for you to attend. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Next, uh, I'd like to get a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes from November 8, 2018. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Next, report and recommendation. Draft and ordinance approving text amendments regarding definitions, use classifications, and off-street parking regulations in Unified Development Ordinance Chapter <coughs> 17 of the Wooddale Municipal Code. Ms. Chrissy. Thank you and good evening. Um, I'm going to go through the requested revisions uh, or the proposed revisions, but the, the purpose for the revisions and the reason why we took a look at this was as we have businesses coming in requesting occupancy, there have been a number of challenges that have presented themselves in terms of trying to classify their uses and we've noticed some conflicts. So this is a, uh, an effort to try and streamline that process as well as to make it easier for businesses to occupy spaces in Wooddale. So with that, 
Um, the first one has to do with definitions. This um, amendment proposes various definitions to be added, revised, and combined. We are looking to define uses that weren't previously defined, particularly the use classifications, again, for uh, transparency purposes, and then also to coordinate definitions throughout the municipal code. Um, highlighted on the screen are a couple examples of those uh, revisions, modifications. I'm happy to go into detail if anyone would like to. Otherwise, I'll keep moving. The table of permitted uses is uh, the next section that we looked at. So we are looking to combine various similar uses into defined use groups. We are looking to delete definitions from the use table since they were already added to the definition section in this proposal. Clarify the terminology, eliminate duplicate uses, and then to consolidate uses. So these are the categories that we took a look at. Here's a couple samples of what we did. So for example, motor vehicle uses, we took four similar type uses and we consolidated them into motor vehicle repair facility for passenger motor, motor vehicles. We added the definition for passenger motor vehicles. We did a similar thing for commercial motor vehicles and again, trying to simplify uh, the use classification process. We did similar things for transportation and utilities, particular to dispatch, where we combined four similar use types into passenger dispatch services, and then we did the same for freight dispatch services. We did the same thing for freight handling, um, and these were a lot of where our, um, the questions or, or issues came up when we're trying to uh, have approve the use for new businesses. But we use the existing definition for freight forwarding, modifying it slightly, and, um, and really just kind of reclassified them, again, for uh, ease of use. The, uh, and I should, let me go back one. So the, the big difference, or one of the major changes, has to do with freight handling facilities, um, and currently they are a special use in the I-1 district. What we're looking to do is actually allow the use on acres, excuse me, properties that are two acres or larger as a by right use. And then for those smaller properties, the ones that are less than two acres, then that would continue to be a special use. Um, and the reason for this is that there is already a land size restriction in terms of new development. So we wanted to be consistent with the two acre size with a type between a type 14 and 13 building. And so on the map here, you see that the purple are the type 13 buildings and also less than two acres. And then the blue shows the um, I-1 district with the more than two acres. So that would be a type 14 building. And again, trying to create consistencies between the regulations. Then we also looked at uh, freight yards where we had three very similar type uses. And so we combined those into uh, one use classification. Then we looked at a couple issues in off-street parking and loading. Recently, the Illinois Accessibility Code was updated. As part of that regulation, it requires compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And so our reference in our code was duplicative. So we're just looking to eliminate that and eliminate redundancy. The other thing relative to off-street parking and loading what has to do with the transition space between um, the street or alley and the nearest parking space, intersecting driveway or parking aisle. So I have a, a graphic here to demonstrate. A 30-foot transition is required from the property line to the nearest parking space. That allows when a car is pulling into the first parking space, then the second car pulling in would not cause a backup of traffic on the road. However, we also, based on how the code is currently written, it requires to be 30 feet from an alley as well. That doesn't make as much sense. So what we've proposed is to reduce the alley street transition to 10 feet. And what that would do is when you have a car that's parked 10 feet from the alley line, then when a car pulls up trying to exit onto the alley, they would have clear vision to be able to pull out um, and still be able to provide some additional space for parking as opposed to the 30 foot transition that's currently required. The CDC did hold a public hearing on this request or on these requests on November 19th 
they did recommend approval finding that the amendments were consistent with a comprehensive plan and the UDO. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, first, uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, now, questions? Uh, Alderman Roy Wesley? Are we done with the presentation? For this portion, yeah. So, has the attorney looked at this, meaning Pat Bond, because <clears throat> when I talked to him about things like this, um, I asked him if it's looked at, if it, from council to, from committee to council, he says he, maybe I'm misinterpreting it, but he said that he doesn't look at these things until it comes to council. So did he write this and who wrote this? Uh, Chrissy. Um, staff wrote this and um, Sean Conway does review this prior to the CDC meeting. He is also present at the CDC meeting for the public hearing and so he provides input prior to and during that process. So Pat Bond may not review it until it gets to the City Council unless there is a question or an issue that's brought up um, you know prior to that point. So is that on all the amendments you do? <clears throat> yeah, I mean the short answer is that's kind of how Pat Bond's office is running it. That well, that Sean is, I find is it kind of taking. Go ahead. I find it kind of interesting that Mr. Bond wouldn't say that then, since it's his office. But I, I wasn't would, present would, at the conversation. I understand that. Okay. So hopefully, I could get some clarification on that next week. Sure, uh, Mayor. Please. Yeah, actually, I had asked Pat about something once. And he goes, well, the council doesn't want me to look at it until they're ready to pass it because once they look at it, they say, he said, that I'm charging you guys and you guys want the final draft. So that's what, basically, he does the final draft. That's the way it's been for a few years now, I think, right, Jeff? Pat looks at it when it's the final draft because there was some issues. People were complaining that the that's attorney. That's been stated, yeah. Right. Sounds familiar. Right. I have one more question. Alderman Roy Wesley. Could you go back to the, where that purple one, where all the, back further. So all the purple are required for a special use. Ms. Chrissy. Currently, all of those properties that are highlighted would require a special use for a freight handling facility. The proposal is to keep the special use on the smaller properties, so the properties highlighted in purple, and then allow the properties that are highlighted in blue to then have a freight handling facility allowed by right. So under this, under this amendment, how many more did you add into the purple here? I mean, is this... Did you add, was there any properties that were added for, to add to special use on this? Ms. Chrissy? No, these are all the properties that are in the I-1 zoning district. And the only thing we did was categorize them by size of property. So again, my question is, if the property is smaller than two acres, you say it's a quarter acre. And it did require special use before. Does it require one now? Under this, yes. So how many properties are, were under, added in purple under two acres? Ms. Chrissy, would you like to I'm afraid I don't, the question I don't or? understand. Oh, that's, that's fine. Mr. That's, Mermis, that's, do, you, do you understand what he's saying? I understand. Okay. <coughs> Alderman Wesley is asking if the purple and blue before required special uses, I think. And I think the answer is they all required special uses now. So we didn't add purple ones requiring a special use. They always did. What we did was allow the blue ones who also required a special use to not require a special use. So we lessened the properties that require special use. I think that's what you're asking. Is that correct? Right. That's what, that's what I understood he was asking. Okay. So nothing was added. Half, half of them were reduced, right? Because the, the bigger parcels. Well, I don't have the before map, so I don't know that. Right. So. Okay, all right, so right. any other questions? We had a motion, we had a second. Roll call. Alderman Roy Wesley? No. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. 
Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. That passes. Next, draft an ordinance to re uh, revise definitions and clarify contractor registration requirements and commercial occupancy and activity regulations, Chapter 4 of the Wooddale Municipal Code. Ms. Kelly, take it away. Uh, this presentation is going to be very short and sweet. The memo is only, I think, two pages. Um, but essentially what we're looking to do here is to coordinate similar terms and clarify definitions. We're coordinating with the, uh, some of the terminology in the UDO. And um, so we've done a red line version here for you to see. It's also in your packet. And then um, for the contractor registration requirements, we are just trying to clarify when it's required. Some of the major uh, building trades were not actually listed in here. And so for clarity purposes, we want to add them. And then also to clarify the documentation required, we're lessening the requirement on that, whereas the code currently requires the um, name and, of all the principals and owners and also the resident, residential address as well as business address of all of those individuals where we don't see that's necessary. Okay. So, are there any questions? Alderman Roy Wesley? Go back to what you just said. You said residence and business address. Correct. So if you look right here, in the, this is currently required in the code that it requires the residential and business address of the contractor and all principals and owners of the company. And so we don't feel that's necessary, so we are just looking to get the business address of the contractor. Because this is the application requirements. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. The ordinance. Are there any other questions? Thank you. All, uh, One more. Alderman Roy Wesley. Sean, can, can we look at this too? Mr. Chrissy. He did not. He did not. He did not. So you did the, ch the changes were done by staff without legal looking at it, correct? Well, for the most part, they're building professionals, that is what their job covers. So this, is, this was within their purview, and before it gets officially approved, it will be reviewed. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mermis, did I you want to say, say something? I was going to say the attorney reviews the items that go to the CDC. This item doesn't go to the CDC. Okay. <coughs> right. I, I mean, this was... Okay. Right. It's quite simple. Um, okay, so motion second. Uh, roll call. Alderman Roy Wesley? No. Nope. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes, that passes. Next, draft a resolution to enter into a contract with Landmark Sign Group for the purchase of signs <coughs> for the Irving Park Road pedestrian bridge. Make that motion. Good. We have a motion, a second. Are there any questions? Alderman Eugene Wesley? I have a couple of questions, if you don't sure. mind. Um, so we're going to put, we're going to put, reading this, we're going to put a, a sign on top of the, the bridge on the Park Road. That's what I'm reading to, am I correct? Ms. Kelly, do you want to? That is correct. I, I can quickly go through and show um, an image here of, of what's being proposed. Um, so <coughs> for everyone at home that's watching, this, uh, these are the existing conditions. So um, the, uh, proposal is to, and the recommendation from the Streetscape and Economic en Enhancement Committee <coughs> is to install a new sign on the girder and it would be illuminated just as the existing gateway signs in the sign outside City Hall and the signs on the train station. They would, uh, this is also going to be fabricated by a landmark sign group, which is uh, to create consistency across those uh, signs that were recently purchased by the city. Um, and let's see, so here is a comparison. Um, I will note that the Streetscape Committee did consider five different sign options and then six color options. The sign would be on both sides of the bridge, so there's two signs as part of this. In terms does that, of... Does that answer your question? No, that, that's fine, but I, I okay. have... All right, no, go ahead. So my question here is, IDOT hasn't approved it yet, because I, I think one time 
when we proposed putting a banner up there promoting Prairie Fest, they absolutely said no way because you can't. That's so, a temporary sign, yes. Right. So now are they going to approve this before we order it? And then, and then I have a, another question is when are we going to finish the entranceway signs that still are not finished? I believe there's two still not completed yet. And they, the other ones are not even lit yet. So why are we taking this on when we haven't even finished that project? I, I just want to know when that project's going to be completed. The two entrance way signs and when's the other one's going to be lit up. I mean, I mean now we're jumping into another part of signage and, and, and those aren't done. So mm -hmm. could someone give me some type of date when those will be done? want to answer that? Um, so I'm going to take the IDOT question first. So we did reach out to IDOT prior to um, coming up with any sign designs because we wanted to make sure that whatever we were going to prove, uh, present would get IDOT approval. Now, this has not been officially approved. It's been preliminarily approved, and they said that it would be subject to their engineering review. So Landmark Signs has pre is going to be preparing the, the drawings for IDOT approval. And so what we're looking for tonight is approval on the sign design so we can then go in for permitting, and then we would bring back the resolution authorizing the purchase of those signs so we don't purchase the signs prior to receiving approval and then have an issue. Um, so that's the first aspect of your question. I, I think the, the second part is that because we have on the CIP this year, we have the bridge improvements and we wanted to paint the sign, then we looked at also the, the paint the bridge, excuse me. Then we also wanted to coordinate the signage. And so it was merely a fact of timing that we were looking to coordinate all of this because we didn't want to paint the sign or paint the bridge and have the old sign still up and not have signage up there. Um, and so in regards to the other signs, uh, we can certainly work on getting a timeline for you, but I don't know that we have one established at this point. I mean, it's okay, but I'm gonna ask the question flat out. Uh, I mean, when, when will you have the date that those other signs will be done? I mean, we, we have pushed those off almost a year now, two years, no. the entrance way signs. No. There's still two not lit up. I mean, and there's two missing still. Well, I mean, so in fairness, the ones being lit up, that's part of that's a ComEd issue. And secondly, there's no shortage of things that need to be done in the city of Wooddale, and we have a tendency to, when something that's a little more urgent presents itself, we, we kind of jump on that, and sometimes that pushes back some other things. So I'm so, with you. I'd so like, to, I, see, I'd I like to see them all some, done. Can I at least she, have some date when those and, all ones are going to be done? And she already said that she's going to put together some some numbers that we look at it and put something together for us. I mean, I've, Mr. Cage? Um, yes. To, the issue with providing a date um, on those two items, uh, Alderman Wesley, one is within the hands of ComEd um, because they've changed their requirements because we have um, trying to illuminate the one at Devon and Wooddale Road for quite some time, uh, partway, through the, uh, um, partway through that project. They changed the requirements, so each sign now has to be uh, metered individually, which was changed from the beginning, so that's a change. Uh, the ball's within uh, ComEd's court. I'm not going to give a time frame for another entity just because I can't guarantee when that's going to be. The other signs that are outstanding have to go through the permit process just like um, one's on Irving Park Road, so it has to go through IDOT. One's um, in the county and it has to get county approval, so um, Clearly the signs are priorities. We moved up the signs for City Hall. We moved up the signs for the train station and this one. Uh, we want to get those signs done. I don't want to give you a date when somebody else is in charge of setting that date. So as soon as we move forward with this, uh, we'll be working on those other signs. Um, and when we have a date, um, because there's two components for the new signs. One is the actual installation of the sign. The other is the actual hooking up of it, because there's not electrical, uh, there's no electrical conduit at these locations. That's why we did the other signs first. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm more than happy to look the other way of getting them lit up, but I would like the two new signs up. Okay. I mean, it, it ain't. We should put the permanent stuff in already. I, I'm just so frustrated okay. at that. Bullerman, Mike Sismarski. Oh, it's nitpicking, but looking at that bridge, I hope it's going to be centered, not off to one side, correct? 
I know, I know it's just a drawing, and I just <laughs> want to make sure it's not off to the, left, to the wrong side of the line. It, it will be. It will be centered. It. It is a matter of us trying to put the. She was in the I just wanted to make. Yeah. Right. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, Mayor, please. And regarding the other signs, I also asked about those. And had, sorry, I had to turn on my microphone. I had spoken to the manager about that, and I know it, he was hoping. Naturally, didn't give any definite the end of next summer, but again. Everything right. No, I'm just saying. I, I, I hear you. Want to get? We want to get those done. But you know. Alderman Roy Wesley. So, Miss Christie, you tell me that you cannot go for permits or ask the IDOT for approval. You need the drawings and stuff. You can't go any further than where you are now without having this landmark. Miss Christie. We did not want to go any further until we had the council's approval on the design because there were five different options that were presented and so the streetscape committee discussed those and so they, this is their recommendation. So we want to make sure that the council wants to move in this direction because otherwise some of the other sign options wouldn't require IDOT's approval. So the answer is no, thank you. Uh, the lit sign that's going to be here, how is that? that light possibly going to affect that camera out there? I guess that would be a police Ms. question. Um, the sign is actually on an angle underneath the platform, so there shouldn't be any effect because the camera is up at the top of the bridge. Should be zero effect. Is that a true answer? <coughs> I, can be right. too. I want to make sure I get the right answers. Because sometimes I'm misled. Thank you. So, can we, can Alderman we go, Roy Wesley, can we go continue with the next slide here? Sure. So, are we going to go through all of them, or is this the last one? Are these? Is this the last slide, or are you going to go through Ms. the whole thing, Miss Chrissy? It, it is the last slide. Okay. So the cost of this is going to be, not including IDOT permit, the cost of the <coughs> sign would be 23000 Is there any extras besides, would we have an idea how much a permit fee is going to be? Ms. Chrissy. We will know once we have IDOT approval, and so it will come back before the council prior to uh, approving the, the actual order for the signs. So we can have that total amount when it comes back before council for official approval. Okay. Right. So this is just to give them the go-ahead. Yes, this is the design we want. They can draw it. They can send it to IDOT. But get the okay. Then come back to us. They're not. They're not doing these drawings for free. They're putting that in the price of the contract of twenty-three thousand dollars. Right. So what happens if if we decide <clears throat> no, we still got to pay land, landmark sign something for the drawings and stuff? Correct. Well, that's true, but that's they're also doing all the signs in the city, so it's a good contractor. I, I'm not saying it isn't. Right. I'm just saying we don't have that price if, if it goes a different direction. Right. So we're agreeing to go for the whole thing without the permit fees of $23,000 plus drawings. Or is that included with the drawings? That includes the drawings in that sign, correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion. We have a second. Are there any other questions, though? Roll call. Alderman Roy Wesley? No. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes, that passes. Next, uh, items to be considered. Oh, first, thank you. Uh, items to be considered at future meetings. Yeah, because we update on those signs. When we call update them. on the signs. Duly noted. Anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. So we'll a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Well, it took the opinion. Well, the public work committee to order. All the minute taker take note that everyone's still here as prior. In approval of minutes for a public work meeting.
uh, public works committee meeting november 8th 2018 7 30. so moved all in favor yes all those in favor aye, aye. opposed <clears throat> First, I have an approval of design contract with Christopher B. Burke Engineering for the Royal Oaks lift station, the, not the, amount, um, the amount not to exceed $80,600. That is my motion. Second. Mr. Um, yeah, so this will be the second of uh, the lift stations that we have, uh, are going to be re uh, rehabilitating. Uh, the first one was Edgebrook. Uh, Christopher Burke also did the Edgebrook lift station uh, design and construction management. Uh, they did a great job, very good at uh, getting information back and forth with us along with the contractor. So uh, we did have six people um, provide us with RFPs. Um, if you looked in your Dropbox, you would have seen those. Um, Christopher Burke was actually the least expensive as well. Um, and uh, after discussion with the RFP committee, we uh, unanimously picked, uh, move forward with uh, Christopher Burke to, uh, to proceed with the, this next lift station. I'd like to make a motion. Sorry. Sorry. Can I? You can second that motion. Second. Questions? Do, so do we have a time span when it will be engineered and, and ready to go? Or? Ballpark. Oh, forget. I got. Yeah. I got. I got. Forget. Well, just so everybody knows just that. Everybody. I mean, this is going to be designed this year. We're going to hopefully get it out to uh, bid sometime in late February, early March. I would hope. Um, but uh, construction for next year. Thank you. That's when it's budgeted. Any other questions? Oh. Roll call. Alderman Roy Wesley. Yes. Alderman Sorrentino. Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley. Yes. Alderman Catalano. Yes. Alderman Sismarski. Yes. Alderman Messina. Yes. Alderman Woods. Yes. Second, I have approval of change order number two, high, uh, final, with a lamp concrete contractors to reduce the Ward 2 Phase 3 contract by $51,199.70 to $1,236,803. Sorry, $1,236,803.50. That is my motion. Second. Questions? No questions? Roll call. Alderman Roy Wesley? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Motion carries. Next, I have approval of final payment to request, uh, request to a lamp con concrete contractor for the phase two, or I'm sorry, for the ward two, phase three, or what is it? Ward four, I'm sorry, phase four project. Phase three. Phase three. Yeah. Phase, phase three. There's four on here. <laughs> I don't know, four doesn't look like that, but I know, but. Yeah, you got too many ones there. Ward two, phase three, right? Phase three. Okay, phase three project. With the amount not to exceed $33,790.75, that is my motion. Second. Questions? Alderman Wesley? That's a final payment for the re regrind resurface? This is Mr. the Forest View project, so this is the total reconstruction of Forest View. So this is final payment, uh, two year maintenance bond. Um, this project is done. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. So this is just, re this is basically retention and a little bit it's a, I, I, stuff out. I got so. confused. I, I'm, I'm good. good. Yeah, I'm good. Roll call, please. Alderman Roy Wesley? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Next, I have the award of contract, award of contract to Division Street Light Purchase and installation by Utility Dynamics Corporation, and not to exceed amount one hundred forty-eight thousand, one hundred forty-eight thousand three hundred forty dollars and zero cents. That is my motion. Second. 
questions? Mr. Roy Wesley. Matt, Division, Division Street, where are all these going? Okay. Mr. York. Yes. Um, so and how many? Excuse me, what was the second part of your How question? many? Okay. So um, this is basically going to be from uh, the alleyway on the north side of the road or approximately about 50 feet e or excuse me, west of Louisa Court, um, where the road shrinks back down to two lanes instead of being three lanes plus um, as you get closer to Waddell Road. Um, there will be uh, 16 lights. Um, there will be two, uh, there will be eight, eight groups, groupings of two lights. Um, that is due to um, um, glare standards um, that are required that we have um, lights um, that, that close together um, due to the height and the, uh, the output of the light. So the taller the light you have, the, least, the less lights that you need. Since the prairie style lights are lower lights, we have to have more of them. And to meet some of the, uh, the anti-glare standards, we had to uh, uh, put more of them in different places. So originally what we did was we looked at the spacing out front here on Wooddale Road, but Wooddale Road also has some overhead lights, so the requirements were a little bit different. Since we don't have the overhead lights over there, um, the Cobra um, regular street lights, uh, there needs to be more of the prairie style lights, hence the reason that we have 16 of them and it's 148,000 instead of the 100,000 budgeted. So, sorry, 148,000. Well, the budget of the amount was $148,340, that's what the bid amount was, um, and we had budgeted 100,000, and the explanation of that is, is also in your memo. So we're Good. We're over $48,340, right? Yes. Okay. But we budget, like I said, and explained in the memo, the budget was for six to eight lights. Um, and we actually were lower than the um, estimated construction costs from the engineer by approximately $30,000. So there was a modification um, and during the design from the budgeted um, to the actual. Mr. Alderman Messina. Two questions. So we did the quick math. So per light, 9271, which to your point in the memo, when I, when I read the packet, um, was 9271 and there was 16 lights, which is different, right? So our cost was, like I think you said, 50,000 less. Um, when is the, well, first off, does that price include installation to power them up? I know the answer, but this the, this hundred forty eight thousand is to do everything. Okay. It's to get them, to install them, put them up, run new wire, lighting controllers, the whole gambit. Okay. Second. <laughs> we'll get. We'll make sure there's a meter on it. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Follow up question. Follow up question mm -hmm. is the install date. Do we have a target install date? I'm guessing. Um. Sure. No. Um, <laughs> because we don't have an award yet. So once it's awarded, then we would um, um, go out and order the lights and get everything going. So once um, the lights are ordered and we have um, a lead time from the supplier, if the lead time's eight to 12 weeks or 12 to 16 weeks or 16 to 20, we don't know, kind of depends on where everything falls, um, then we'll have a better idea of what's going on. Okay. Mayor. Matt, in the memo here, it said something about we had some some lights that were taken out because of the with the Irving project. Is that already included in here, or that those will become deductions? Then, right? your yeah. So um, we looked at that as a possible offset to the cost in the budget. Um, that we took down some street lights as part of the um, intersection project. Um, they are now sitting at the North Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, I know that there are some of them that are in there that are not able to be reutilized again um, due to taking them down and transporting them and other things that would have happened in between there. Um, 
I haven't worked with utility dynamics to see what we can um, utilize, what, what's good product out there. So one of the first thoughts I had was once we got this contract was to get hold of utility dynamics, have them come down, take a look, and see if there's any of those lights that we can reuse. If we can reuse those, obviously they're about $4,500 a piece, just the light itself. Um, the additional cost is the running the wires and new bases and all that kind of stuff, but about 4,500. So if we can get, you know, eight to 10 out of there, now we're, we're real close to what our original budget number was. So um, a way for us to, do, to reduce the, amount, the overall amount of the contract, which I would like to get the full amount of the contract, then we can always come back with a deduct, um, a change order for the contract at the end. Um, but I'd like to work with, be able to work with the utility dynamics and see what they can use. If we can, if there's 10 of them down there, but they, there's only enough pieces to get six of them going, then we get six of them going. And I'm not gonna put substandard material out there though either, right. so. Any more questions? <clears throat> Roll call. Alderman Roy Wesley? No. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Motion carries. This time I have items to be considered by future for future meetings. First I have a senior snow lawn and program for winter 2018 or 2019. Next, have a sidewalk concrete cost share program, winter 2019. Anything else to be added? Yep. Eugene Wesley. I don't think it has to be added. If someone can answer me, what what about those street lights that were supposed to be installed on Ed, Edgebrook, I believe, along the creek that we approved? We we're waiting oh, for comment. Oak, Oakwood. Oakwood, I'm saying. Yeah. Oakwood, could you give me an update on that? Sure. Yeah, I can give you a quick update. The original timeline that they had given us was, I believe, the week of January 4th-ish area. Um, but that was also prior to the storms that happened the week before Thanksgiving. So I'm going to guess that that date is probably not a good date, but I have not heard a confirmation from ComEd yet. But originally, their date was the uh, right around the first of Fe or January. Any other piece be in, Mr. Calano? Yeah. Um, what kind of policy do we have on school bus when um, when we have issues with the snow and cleaning the school bus corners for the kids to take the school bus? Uh, we had an issue last time um, that our plow, of course. You know, when they were plowing the streets, it kind of built up in the corners, and then it was a hard time for the residents or even us to clean the snow out, and then it froze. And so when I was uh, getting up going to uh, work in the morning, I saw some of the kids standing on the street waiting for the school bus because they couldn't stand in the corners because of the snow. Do we have a type of policy that we can uh, look at that? <coughs> Mr. York? Uh, yeah. Currently, we don't have a policy. Um, we can look into options of what we can do for that and bring it back. Uh, it'll be an expanded level item in the budget for next year. Okay. Any other questions or anything else to put on a future meeting? Uh, roll call for adjournment. Make a motion. Make a motion. Make a motion for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to call the Finance and Administration Committee to order. Uh, no take or please note the same people are present. Up first, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Next up. I'm sorry. Next up, the uh, favorite time of the year, uh, the fiscal year 2018 audit report. Um, before we start there, though, I just actually wanted to just add, actually, no, let's, let's move to you first, and I'll say a few words at the end, but uh, over to you guys.
Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. On behalf of Sikich, I'd like to uh, thank the city for inviting us here this evening to present the results of our audit of the city as of and for your fiscal year ended April 30th, 2018. My name is Anthony Cervini. I'm the engagement partner for the city's audit. Also here with me this evening is Tom Sawicki. Tom Sawicki is the senior audit manager on the city's engagement as well, runs all of our day-to-day on-site field work. As a result of our audit, we've issued a total of three reports that are before you this evening for your consideration. The largest of the bound documents, the comprehensive annual financial report. We've also issued our auditor's communication to the city council, as well as a separate TIF examination and compliance report on the Thorndale quarter TIF. In addition, as required by state statutes, we filed the annual financial report with the comptroller's office. Again, that has been filed uh, for the city. My comments this evening will primarily focus on the comprehensive annual financial report, but as always, happy to answer any questions on any of the reports before you. I'd like to take the time to clarify. You said the report's in front of you, correct? That is correct. Okay, good. So, as chair, I won't be entertaining any questions regarding anything other than that for sake of time. Uh, Alderman, Alderman, geez, Brad, Brad Wilson, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just before uh, Anthony gets going, just wanted to point out that what the what we're going to uh, progress through here are um, the presentation slides that he's going to be touching on, not the full document. Uh, if there are questions on specific points or pages within the document that we didn't go over, uh, we do have the full document available to go to that page should there be a question on one of those pages. However, in the interest of keeping the presentation uh, to be able to flow in an efficient manner, uh, this deck is only what he's going to be discussing, but that doesn't preclude or questions from anything throughout any of the three documents. Um, it's just that this is just what we're going to go through for the uh, ease of the presentation. Right, so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, we do want to commend the city for uh, preparing this comprehensive annual financial report. As I've noted in previous presentations, the comprehensive annual financial report is a document that goes well above and beyond the minimum reporting requirements that the city has, both under Illinois compiled statutes as well as under generally accepted accounting principles. So again, do commend you for preparing this document that's is done in the spirit of dis uh, full disclosure, transparency, and accountability to your taxpayers, residents, and any others that may have an interest in the city's financial position or changes in financial position. On page Roman numeral three, which is on the screen as well. Mr. Servini, can I interrupt you? Yes, this certificate, how many years in a row have we received this? It's the eighth year, seventh year? No, this is 20. Probably more than, I believe it would be more than that. Um, 20 plus, probably 28, probably. Is it a better transmit? Yeah. That's the budget, this is the. <clears throat> Don't have that information within the, the document, but it's you know, certainly something that uh, you know, Finance Director Wilson would be able to provide to, you know, to the council on that in terms of the total years. Okay. Please continue. Sorry to interrupt. Not a problem. The Certificate of Achievements for Excellence in Financial Reporting is awarded by the Government Finance Officers Association. Again, a thorough review process that is involved as part of the uh, GFOA review where it undergoes review by members of the GFOA Special Review Committee as well as members of GFOA staff. On the following page, this is the first page of the city's letter of transmittal. This is a very good letter of transmittal prepared uh, by Finance Director Wilson. Again, on this document, this is a, a unique component of the comprehensive annual financial report as it allows for management's one spot to provide subjective discussion of the Activities that occurred during the course of the year as well as a, you know, generally an audit document is a historical looking document. This is the one chance that management has to look forward within this document. But again, look, recommend reading the letter of transmittal in conjunction with the management's discussion and analysis, which I'll cover in just a moment. Next item I'll cover for you is the independent auditor's report. This is printed on Sickage letterhead. You can find this on pages one through three of your comprehensive annual financial report. Call to your attention this evening that management retains ultimate responsibility for the fair presentation of the financial statements presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. 
Those are set forth for the city by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. Our responsibility as auditors outlined in the next section is to issue an opinion on the financial statements based on an audit conducted in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. The following page, the opinion page, pleased to present to the chair in this evening, we've issued a clean unmodified opinion on the city's financial statements as of and for your fiscal year ended April 30th, 2018. The clean unmodified opinion is the highest level of assurance that we can provide as auditors and it means the city's financial statements in our opinion are fairly stated in all material respects in accordance with those generally accepted accounting principles. Yes, Alderman Roy Wesley. Opinion, is that your opinion or is that opinion come from where? That is our opinion on the city's financial statements. Okay, so during this whole report that you're gonna see no problems with our finances. Is that your opinion? In terms of the, the opinion that we issue means that in our, from our audit, based on the procedures that we perform, which are outlined, if we go back to the, uh, the previous page, is we conduct our audit, so we have standards that are set forth on our standpoint by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, referred to as generally accepted auditing standards. Yeah. So the next paragraph in the, in the second, or that second paragraph there outlines how we go through our audit process for that. However, it is not, you know, an audit in and of itself is designed to present what we call reasonable assurance, not an absolute assurance. So I cannot sit here this evening and say that there's, you know, nothing that okay. is wrong with these. It's, it's, it's a limited procedure in terms of the reasonable assurance that we could provide as auditors. All right, I just, because mm -hmm. I want to- Thank you, please continue. I Thank just you. want to get his definition of opinion. Thank you, we appreciate okay. it. And I think I have the right to ask that. You got, you got your answer. Please go ahead and continue. On the next page, you'll see the change in accounting principle. So the city did adopt GASB okay. statement number 75 okay. on accounting and financial reporting for post-employment benefits other than, other than pensions, or this is an OPEB standard. The city did choose to early implement this pronouncement. Again, this is changing the, what we call the, what was previously referred to as a net OPEB liability, now reported as a total OPEB liability. This is very similar to what was reported in the city's comprehensive annual financial report from a few years ago related to the changes on reporting your pension fund amounts, including the Illinois, Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund as well as the police pension fund. Finally, in the other matter section, Note in our opinion that the required supplementary information is required to be presented as part of the audit under generally accepted auditing principles as well as by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. However, we're looking at this information in relation to the audit as a whole, but do not provide an opinion on this information. The other information section, including the introductory section, you're combining an individual fund financial statements and schedules as well as your statistical section are presented for purposes of additional analysis the combining an individual fund financial statements, which include your budget versus actual schedules for your individual funds, are presented what we call an in relation to opinion. So in relation to what's defined as the basic financial statements, we believe these to be fairly stated in, in, in that relation. The introductory and statistical sections in the report are not subject to the audit procedures. We do not provide an opinion on those documents. You go past this page, please. On page MDNA1, you'll find the management's discussion and analysis. Again, this is a component of the document prepared by the city. Management's discussion and analysis, if you're looking at no other components to the comprehensive annual financial report, do recommend reading this. Provides select information from the comprehensive annual financial report, consolidated information, but more importantly, information from the prior fiscal year, as well as management's analysis and discussion of why those amounts changed from the fiscal year. So it actually puts a lot of context to some of the numbers that are in this comprehensive annual financial report. Next is the beginning of the basic financial statements is your statement of net position for the city. The statement of net position has three columns, the governmental activities, this is your general fund, and you have your taxpayer supported funds. Your business type activities include your water sewer fund as well as your sanitation and commuter parking fund, and a consolidated total column on the far right. So, this, sorry to interrupt, we have a question. Um, Mr. Mayor. Mayor? Since you're talking about the general fund, um, so at the Shape of Wooddale, we was a, I got received the questions last week from uh, <coughs> Tasker Bank 
and so I went through them over the weekend. And there was one stated your annual budget is $40 million and your cash reserves are $9 million. $9 million does not equal nine months of operating expenses, as you stated. Can you clarify? So just so I might have omitted maybe a word that night or something, we have approximately $40 million budget that includes everything. The $9 million in cash reserves is for day-to-day -day operations. And maybe Mr. Wilson could probably give a little, but that's, if we didn't do any other projects, water, streets, anything, the city can actually function for nine months, police, public works, streets, snow plowing, all that stuff. Am I saying the right thing? Because I think I might have omitted operating, day-to-day -day operations. So I think this resident just got confused. Sure. So, and you know what, if I didn't hear everything, I might be confused also. 40 million, nine million is not nine months, so. Just Director Wilson, would you like to add? Um, no, I think you did a good job explaining it, but um, correct. I think the, the, the substantive point was that the 40 million was all budgets, and then the 9 million that you were referring to earlier was for the, uh, the operational and portion of it. I so those, it, I'm not sure if I said day to day operations. I, I don't recall that either, but I that. Uh, to the yes, yeah, so that, was, that was a good catch on their part, so yeah. Please continue. Thank you. On this particular schedule, the statement of net position, one thing to note, this is presented on what we call the economic resources measurement focus and the full accrual basis of accounting. Now that what that means and how that impacts these financial statements is pretty substantial in terms of this. This is looking at the city's overall net position at a whole as a whole. From the bottom of this page, the second line from the bottom, and I'll focus primarily on the governmental activities, you see that there's an unrestricted deficit net position here, approximately $10.5 million. Now this amount is in a deficit position explicitly due to the fact of the, what Governmental Accounting Standards Board has required the city to implement in terms of pronouncements over the last several years. So if you were to take the effect out of those from a comparison standpoint and look at what would that unrestricted net position be had the city not been required to implement GASB 68 and reporting your net pension liabilities on related amounts as well as your total OPEB liability and related amounts for your governmental activities, it'd be about a ten and a half million dollar positive net position there. So about a twenty million dollar swing in terms of what those amounts from a reporting standpoint changed. Sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Police, question. Sir. So you're saying that's due to the pension, right? Because I know last year we had the presentation on the pension. I think it was 40 years, 2040 or something goes on. Correct, for the night, correct, the, the and, requirements. And, and we have to get to 90% and all that stuff. Correct. So, okay, I, I just want to make sure I'm mm -hmm. understanding. Please continue. The business type activities, again, your water, sewer, commuter parking, and sanitation, also in a deficit position. About half of that deficit, a little bit more, is related to those same items, the net pension liabilities and related amounts associated with those. Next is the statement of activities. This is your long-term income statement, so same measurement focus and basis of accounting as the previous schedule. On the second page here, you'll see the third line from the bottom is your change in accounting principle. As we noted on the opinion section, the city early implemented <coughs> the, the uh, pronouncement for GASB statement number 75 on reporting your OPEB liability or other post-employment benefits. This created a one point about a $1.9 million reduction to your overall net position. The change in net position, two lines above that's highlighted there is your overall change in net position for the year. For your governmental activities, you had a decrease of one point, just under 1.5 million, a 293,000 for your business type activities, $21 million net position. That 293 is essentially a break even. We'll highlight a few additional items as to what caused the uh, decrease in your governmental activities net position as well. Total for the city then 1.7, 1.77 and a decrease, coupled with the 1.877 for the change in accounting principle. The next page that I cover is the balance sheet for governmental funds. This is page seven of the document. Balance sheet for your governmental funds is presented on, we call a current financial resources measurement focus on a modified accrual basis of accounting. This means that any capital assets of the city, as well as those long-term liabilities, including those pension liabilities, have been removed 
from the presentation here, more of a short-term focus on this schedule. In the general fund column, which is the far left column, the second or third line from the bottom, excuse me, is your unassigned fund balance in your general fund, just under 7.5 million. One good ratio to look at with that number is comparing that number to your general fund expenditures for the year. You're at approximately 60% of your general fund expenditures for the year. This yeah. <clears throat> so this is 7.4 million. And I know I have Brad this constantly. What do we have in reserves and whatnot? And I always hear the number nine, and I think I saw somewhere in the book here 9.8. What's the difference? Just so I'm understanding what's going on. Because we do have. Nine months, correct, Mr. Wilson? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, one, um, unfortunately, does not beget the other because um, they're measuring, they're, they're two, different, uh, two different metrics. So, um, and that's part of the, the difference as you go through the reports here, um, as Mr. Savini said, they're all based on different measurement focuses, which is why they're all going to present a little bit differently. So this is looking at the total assets, which is 14.8 million, which Total assets, you know, it's all the assets of the fund, which in the general fund, governmental funds, those are generally described as things that are cash or could become cash in a relatively short period of time. So um, if you're just looking at assets, that's greater than, um, you know, the $12 million budgeting uh, expenditures that we have, um, less liabilities, um, and then some of our friends at GASB, they've taken out uh, some of the deferred inflows because they take longer to come in. So this assets section here, like I said, is actually greater than a year. If you back out the liabilities, you're right at a year. And then when you break it down on a fund balance level, you're at about 60% after you account for some of the um, slower to come in assets. So it, it, it flows downhill. Like I said, one does not equate to the other is, is pretty, it used to be a lot closer a nexus between the two numbers, um, but as Gasby's tried to make the presentation look more, I hate to say corporate America-like, but more like corporate reports, um, that's changed that relationship between the fund balance reporting and the cash and the asset reporting. Follow-up, Mayor? Yeah, please. So, Tom, yeah. so basically, we do have the $9.8 million. <laughs> Correct. I saw it in this book. I know that I should have marked it. Um, yeah. Then Go ahead, Director Wilson. Page oh, four. Oh, the nine. Oh, correct. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Just that you correct. guys take this out and assign this and that. Class, whatever. Whatever you find guys do. Okay. It's so on page four is where, if anybody's at home looking through page four at the top under assets, receivables, net of allowance for uncollectibles, $9,886,785. Yeah. In reserves. The, the sign. Yeah, correct. And that's the number you always give. Okay. Right. Great. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in terms of a policy standpoint as well, because looking at the cash figures versus the your fund balance figures, there is a difference in terms of those accruals and other components to that. So the city does have a fund balance policy that requires your unassigned fund balance in your general fund to be 50% of the budgeted expenditures for the next fiscal year for that, so you are in compliance with that policy as of April 30th, 2018. The next page is the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance for your governmental funds. The total expenditures number, that's the second half of the calculation. I was just going through in terms of your unassigned fund balance as a percentage of your general fund expenditures, that 59.8% or 60% figure rounded there. Your net change in fund balance for the year and your general fund had a decrease of 537,800. If you look a few lines above, you'll see there were transfers out for the year that almost a cent accounted for more than an entire decrease there, so it's transferring dollars to other funds. Your capital projects fund, also reported as what we call a major fund, had a decrease in your fund balance of about $1.1 million for the year. That was related to planned capital expenditures. Alderman Eugene Wesley. Okay, when you said transfer funds to another fund, 
what what will that be transferring money from one fund for for a loan of a treatment plant or or, or, or how how what do you mean transferring director Wilson from one account to another I mean sure so the 598 uh, 494 here yeah. uh, portion of that was to land acquisition for the purchase of a property okay. and the other portion of it was to the surf fund for the funding of uh, some port current and future vehicle replacements to the surf fund the uh, capital equipment capital, replacement yeah, fund equipment replacement fund so that's what uh, comprised that uh, just under 600,000 it was uh, one property and then um, funding of the surf for the year out of the general fund I, I'm good I'm good thanks any more questions no, I'm good. you're still on this page correct so Correct. Comment on this page, please. Correct. Continue. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, final item for your attention, then, uh, just the net change in fund balance for the total governmental funds as a whole, two hundred fifteen thousand five hundred four decrease there. So essentially, from a fund balance standpoint, at a break even for <coughs> your governmental funds as well. The next page is the statement of net position for the can proprietary you, funds. One sec. Sorry, I had a comment question. If you can go back to that page, it might be a question actually for um, Director Wilson. Um, I'd ask some questions about uh, sales tax revenue. And um, obviously, I think this council has done a phenomenal job at recruiting businesses for the most part. Um, from what I understand, if you can just comment or verify, this time, compared to this time last year, from what I understand, we are already $300,000 ahead of where we were in sales tax revenue. Is that incorrect or correct? Please, Director Wilson. Uh, certainly. Um, the last time I looked at those numbers, that would be a correct statement. So I just want to give kudos over, to yeah, uh, the majority of my council members, um, as well as staff, have, that have been instrumental in recruiting these additional businesses and driving that additional incremental sales tax revenue. Please continue, unless you wanted to add anything else. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The statement of net position for, for your proprietary funds presents information separately for your water sewer funds, a major fund, as well as your non-major enterprise funds, including, again, your parking and sanitation funds. Again, looking at your unrestricted net position, at the bottom of this page, you'll see the water fund at a deficit net position of $1.567 <coughs> million, non-major enterprise a combined unrestricted net position of 222919 Again, that 1,345, which correlates to your statement of net position that we looked at earlier in the report. The next page, you'll see the statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in net position for the proprietary funds. Again, same column presentation here. Again, overall, essentially a break-even year uh, across the enterprise funds as a whole. Water fund had a drawdown of about 490,000, offset by about 200,000 in increases in your commuter parking and sanitation funds. The next page is the statement of cash flows for your proprietary funds. Again, a good metric to look at as you look at the comprehensive annual financial report. Your net increase in cash and cash equivalents from the water sewer standpoint, again, at a, at a break even level there, um, $7,246 $7, increase in cash. You did have operations uh, in your non major enterprise funds that did increase your cash balances in those funds by about $341,000 for the fiscal year ended April 30th, 2018. Yeah, so you said that was a water fund, there was an increase? In the cash. In the cash. That's correct, sir, it was $7,246 a total there, so a small increase in the cash position as of, uh, for the year ended April 30th, 2018. It is, I'm sorry. Is that after we, we make our loan payment, we still have that? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a question on the meeting? Yep. Payment to employees. Explain that. So payment to employees is, is composed of several factors there. That salaries, benefits, any associated personnel cost from a cash standpoint there. So those are cash payments coming out of the water sewer fund uh, for those employees. Also factors in any changes to 
uh, any of the associated accruals with that. So for example, as of April 30th, 2018, there's amounts that are reported for what we call accrued payroll for amounts that have been earned by the employees not yet paid out. So those are all factored into that figure. Sorry, Brad, we were talking about uh, the transfer, the 688,000. I thought you were trying, you were telling me that it was, we lowered it, but it's still here. I, I remember it as 688 last year. Director Wilson? Sir, I, am I missing something? Sure, so it was lowered in the current fiscal year, uh, but the prior fiscal oh, year for this audit yeah, yeah. Yeah. was still. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, please continue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Final few items I'll present relate to the city's what we call other post-employment benefits as well as your pension funds. Just uh, present information on those liabilities for you. The note eight on other post-employment benefits, or OPEB, is a modified note this year, again, related to that same implementation of GASB Statement 75. The following page, page 48, you'll see some of the required disclosures associated with the OPEB note. Highlighted is that the city's total OPEB liability of 2.6 million as of April 30th, 2018. That was determined uh, by a separate actuarial evaluation that the city had performed to determine that amount. The next page. Again, this is the final component related to that change in accounting principle for this. So as part of the implementation of GASB statement number 75, the city's existing net OPEB obligation that was reported under the previous guidance under GASB 45 was written off. The total Sorry. OPEB liability increase, or. Can I stop you for a second? Oh, sure. Because there's a lot of page numbers. Good. There's page numbers up Please, here, yes. down here. Page 54 in your books, if you're could, following. Could he say the page that he's going to? You say I can. Page. I certainly. If you would, please. My pleasure. Yeah. So on page 54, which is the last page of the notes of the financial statements, you will see uh, the calculations here for the total OPEB liability that was reported as of the beginning of the year, as well as a write-off of the old net, net OPEB obligation. So again, a 1.8 million, uh, 1,877,734, the overall effect on the city's net position as of the beginning of the year related to this pronouncement. We're going to move to page 58, which is in the required supplementary information section. This is the schedule in the, of changes in the employer's net pension liability and related ratios for the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund. This information, again, is presented on a calendar year perspective. Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, or IMRF, is based on a calendar year basis, so all the information provided to the city is based on that December 31st calendar year end date. So as of December 31st, 2017, which is the most recent information available as of your April 30th reporting period, the highlighted number in the middle of the page is the net investment income for the year. As you can see, IMRF had a uh, really a banner year from an investment standpoint in 2017, uh, going from 118,000 of investment income in 2015 up to 1.6 million in 2016, and then over 4.2 million in 2017. The impact of that can be seen. <coughs> you put, oh. Any questions? Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Continue. Um, the impact of that can be seen in the second highlighted figure there, which is the planned fiduciary net position as a percentage of your total pension liability. This is your funded ratio for the plan. Went from 87.66% to 97.27% as of April 30th, or December 31st, 2017. Anthony, if, if I can interrupt you, please. Um, Mayor, you had a question, and then we'll get to you. I'll yeah, and uh, on the percentage there, so you're telling us we're 97% funded now on the pension? For your IMRF. IMRF. Oh, for IMRF. The police is separate. Okay. Correct. Because I was going to say, I thought they told us it was going to take a few years. I was going to say, that's a miracle. Okay. Correct. This is, I, this I is, this is that happened that quick. Okay. exclusive to IMRF. That's correct. All right. I'll, any other questions, Mayor? No, no. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Great, please continue. So the final page, so page 59, the next page, addresses the same information for the police pension fund. The funded ratio for this plan, the plan fiduciary net position, again, as, as a percentage of the total pension liability as of April 30th, 2018, based on the actuarial valuation performed as of that date, 
was at 57.09%, so essentially flat compared to the prior fiscal year. The number that I've highlighted on the top portion of the page, the differences between expected and actual experience, is really what's driving that flat change in the funded ratio for the year. That number is based on the, anything on the top half of this page, that total pension liability calculation, is based on figures determined by the city's independent actuary who calculates those amounts there. So any differences between actual and expected experiences are assumptions as they've made related to demographics, salaries, personnel figures, et cetera there that factor into that. So in this case, that increased reliability, a little over a million dollars for that, again, driving your overall you know, funded ratio, staying about the same for that. Just, it sounds like those are factors that are beyond our control. That is correct. You want to, do, would you, can you, if you don't mind, Anthony, could you repeat those factors? I heard demographics, but could you? Sure. So some of the factors that, you know, in terms of the differences between expected and actual experience are, you know, personnel. So in terms of how many personnel are, are members of the fund for that, what the salary increases are, uh, some of those things, what those salary assumptions are for that. So, if, for example, if the actuary, and I'm just throwing out hypothetical numbers here, factored in a, you know, an increase in salary assumptions of, of 3% and the council approved in contract a 2.5%, that would impact those numbers, vice versa there. So these are any assumptions that the actuary is making at any given point in time, okay. and then the differences between what they projected may happen versus what actually did happen. Go ahead, Alderman Eugene Wesley. Doesn't that, based on pension funds, also invest in investments? So the pension fund itself um, has the ability, you know, from the, in terms of how the pension funds are structured in our compiled statutes, has the ability to, you know, there's three pension fund members and then two appointed members for that. So they are making the investment decisions for that. Um, so that's factored into the net investment income there. Um, if there were any other changes in terms of, you know, from an experience standpoint, those are more factoring in to the interest piece on that, and that calc and so the second line from the top there, and then any changes in assumptions that were made to that. So for example, if there was a change in the expected investment rate of return, that would flow through as a change in assumption that would be you know, at the discretion of, you know, in this case, the city could choose to have a different discount rate that they had the pension liability calculated based on their, you know, you'd see impact IMRF is actually considering a change in their a discount rate at their meeting tomorrow for that. Um, but again, those are things that there are certain components for the assumptions, for example, that may be subject to, you know, how the actuary is doing that calculation. You may have input into those. The actual and or the uh, expected and actual experience is not one that you really have any sort of uh, ability to control that. Please continue. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was the uh, that was the last. Uh, Presentation slides. Alderman yeah. Roy Wesley. I think does it, IMRF is not controlled by any of us. Just so we we understand that. So it's controlled by a separate board. They come up with their, their own rules. So I, I think some of the questions that are coming out tonight is being confused of how we control the if we control the pension or any state like that, which we don't. From an IMRF standpoint, that, that's, that's correct. IMRF has a separately elected board, as you noted, for that. Mm -hmm. IMRF makes an annual determination, you know, tells the city what your annual required contribution rate is for that. You don't have any say in the assumptions used as part of those valuations, the investment mix. Those are all addressed by the IMRF, you know, IMRF board <laughs> and IMRF statutes that are, that are applicable to them. That's correct. Which in return, they Go tell ahead. us how much to pay. Correct. Thank Any you. other questions? Okay, I think that concludes the audit. My, Mayor, do we need a motion to approve the audit? Yeah, Go ahead. So it would just be a motion to uh, accept the audit. I think we have a motion by Alderman Eugene Wesley, a second by Alderman Art Woods. Roll call, please. Alderman Roy Wesley? No. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. And that passes. Next up, oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh,
Who is? Alderman Eugene Wesley. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have, a, I have one question. Was there any problems with anything that we need to correct in our audit in the past? There's always been a, maybe I missed it. You're referring to the auditor's communication document? I'd yeah. be happy to. Can I, just, may I, Randy? Yes, please do. I'd like to know what. Certainly. So if you have the other doc, one of the other documents in front of you, the auditor's communication to the members of the city council and management, that addresses anything that we have from a recommendation standpoint. I'd be happy to cover those. Um, you can make it short and sweet. Just tell me which ones. I'd ask that you turn to uh, page 11 of that document. Do you have to So this component is our communication of any deficiencies in internal control um, and other comments to management. So the de term deficiencies, as, as with any of the other comments in or, or language in here, is set forth by the auditing standards that we follow. So a deficiency, by definition, is the lowest level comment that we can have in terms of a recommendation, the least severe comment. We did not have anything that elevated to the level of the next level, which would be called a significant deficiency, and then the highest level comment that we can have as a material weakness. So anything that we've identified falls under the deficiencies category. So on the next page, page 12, we had one current year comment related to the city's grant revenues and expenditures. During our audit procedures over grant revenues and expenditures, we did note that there were additional receivables and revenues related to two of the separate grants that existed that needed to be uh, reported for that. Grants are reported what we call the matching principle there. So as you incur costs, as you have the expenditures incurred for that, that's when you recognize the associated revenue with that. So in this case, the city had incurred certain costs but had not reported the associated revenues with that. So this was just aligning the cost inflows as well as the cost outflows associated with these two particular grants. One of the important things to note from a grant standpoint as well, which is noted in the last sentence there, is just that um, if the city did expend greater than $750,000 in federal awards during the course of the year, it would require what we call a single lot of the federal expenditures. So that's just one of the important factors in terms of being able to, to track these amounts. Any comment on that, uh, Director Wilson? I, no. Fair enough. Please continue, Mr. Servini. On page 15 of this document, then, is a status of the comments from the April 30th, 2017 audit. So these are the prior year comments that we've updated the status on. I can present this evening that prior year comments on purchasing policy compliance as well as capital assets have been considered implemented. We did not note those recurring issues during the course of our audit for the April 30th, 2018. For the escrow deposits, the final comment there, um, as noted in the comment, uh, in previous years, there's many engineering escrow deposits that are out there um, related to this comment. We had recommend, recommended in prior years for the city to look at the operating procedures over the escrow deposits, determine if there were improvements that could be made to this process in terms of tracking, monitoring these amounts on an ongoing basis. Can report this evening that we did see improvement in that during the course of the year. Um, however, we do continue to recommend that the city kind of memorialize those operating procedures and whether it be in a formal policy or in a, you know, kind of the operating procedures document that the city uses for kind of your other standard operating procedure type tools on that. So, Alderman Eugene Wesley. So are we, is, like, is the finance department going to bring something to us to improve to change that a little bit more? Like, Director Wilson. Yeah, that's just the internal um, internal policies, just the interdepartmental whatnot. Um, so that's just going to get um, memorialized internally as all of our other uh, procedures do downstairs. So, can you define memorialize? Uh, we're going to write it down and have all the employees sign off on it that they understand it, that they've received it, and that if they screw it up, we can do something about it. Great. Any other questions? Alderman Eugene Wesley? No? No, I just Okay. Please continue. That concludes the uh, prior status comments on that, so I have nothing, uh, nothing further on my standpoint, Mr. Chair. Okay. Great. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Cervini? 
We appreciate it as always. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Great work. We it's already passed, so we can move on to the next item, the water rate discussion for 2018. Pass that on to Director Wilson. <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we have? Great. Yeah. Is there a motion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, so as we, we've discussed um, for the past number of years, um, with the construction of the treatment plant and the associated debt service, um, the water rates, unfortunately, um, have had to go up. Uh, last year, there was a, uh, a remaining balance, and the council at that time did about half of that amount. Um, and so over the years, the council had made a, a market decision to, to slow the increases down over time. Um, which has worked. Um, so like I said, the council last year did half of it. At this time, um, the rate structure is sufficient to cover um, the core operations and some capital. Uh, however, you know, the, it's not the capital spending at the level that it was previously, because um, we cut back on capital last year to make sure that the, um, the water fund was going to be cash flow positive, which you saw in the audit report, albeit $7,000. It, it still was, so that was a, a good thing. So that, that's been working. Um, so at this point, there's still the other half of the amount from last year, which is the last portion of it, which on a per thousand gallon basis is $1.75. Uh, or it's 1162 on a fixed cost. What it is, what it equates out to is about $700,000. Um, in revenue, uh, and so it's still approximately a quarter per 100,000 on the volumetric side, or it's sixty-six per 100,000 on the fixed cost side. So just looking for a direction tonight uh, how, uh, what the council wants to do with water rates going into the next calendar. Uh, next calendar year is the past probably five years we've done it on a calendar basis uh, as opposed to the uh, fiscal year basis. Um, that just kind of lined up with the DuPage Water Commission a little bit, but um, so at this point, just looking for the council input on what direction they want to go <coughs> in next year, and if there's any change, we'll prepare the appropriate uh, ordinance for that. If uh, there's not, then there's nothing, nothing to do. Alderman Eugene Wesley. So my question is, so what do we have to be at now to pay for the treatment plant? I mean, what what was the Fresh my memory here because I'm losing it as I get older here. What was the golden number that we had to be at by a certain time to make sure we make our payments for the treatment plan? Wasn't there a certain rate of water rate that we had to be at? I can't remember what it is. Could you tell me what that was? Director Wilson? If you have it. If you don't, I understand. Yeah, I, I know what number you're talking about. Right. I don't have that number. Um, what I can okay, say, though, is, right. is that the the rate composition now with the um, expenditure structure and what we've done with capital the last couple of years is sufficient. Like I said, there needs to be some more restoration to the to the capital side, but it is sufficient at this point, just in a complete vacuum, to, to cover the debt service. So what you, I'm sorry. Go ahead, continue. What, what you're trying to tell me then, we don't have to do a water increase? Is that the way I'm understanding this here? Director Wilson? So, that's a, that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> so it's just from an operational standpoint and a debt service standpoint, um, the rate structure is sufficient at this time. However, um, there are some things on the capital side that need to get done that if they don't get done, eventually could lead to, you know, uh, additional leakage or things failing that would lead to emergency repairs, which would cost more money. So, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. So, okay. so, so what you're saying so is we don't act on something that needed to be fixed like it happened 10, 20 years ago when prior administrations kept ignoring the problem and putting Band-Aids. We could end up in a problem where the next councils after us would be stuck basically building a new wastewater treatment plant. Is that about right? 
would be hesitant to say that I said all of those words. Well, no, I'm just trying to figure in my mind what that <laughs> means, I guess. It, it was just like um, the band aids. Well, like, like your car, you know, like if once the brakes start to squeak and mm -hmm. you don't get them fixed, well, then by the time you go, then maybe you need brake pads and rotors and calipers. Where if you right. had just changed the pads four months ago, it would have been a different, it would have been a different job. So it, it's, you know, they're, they're, it's good. Mayor, please. Yeah. So basically what Brad said is, you know, they wanted us to raise this another up to $11.62. We're making the payments on the treatment plan. But what's left then for projects is not, is not there. So you'll, CIP's coming. No, I, no, no that's, but I, what do we have? We had 300,000 from what I remember on that slide in the water fund. I think, Mr. Wilson, if you remember, do you remember? Oh, just in cash was about there, yeah. yeah. So what we're collecting right now covers the treatment plant, which needed to be done. We have other projects that need to be done that are gonna be coming forward. So yeah, again, we've always taken the path slow and steady, not, not whack everybody all at one time. You know, should, should we take, if we take a dollar right now on fixed cost, we have some things coming up that are coming online this coming year, so that might offset, that might bring the revenues up because you'll have a couple new buildings going up over by the household that should probably be up and running hopefully the end of August. Um, depends how fast they go or whatnot. And a couple other projects in town. So they'll all be using water. You have more people using water. You have you're making some extra money so that, and one dollar would be actually $12 a year to the residents. And, and I know that even those on fixed incomes, $12 is probably a lot. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Tony Canaletto. Yeah, uh, do we know what the, uh, the rental, rental, rentals residence impact has had on our water use? Not yet. Not yet. Director Wilson. Yeah, I was going to say it's it's hard to to judge because there there isn't um, so 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 no because they're not fully occupied. Um, obviously, they did quite a bit of watering this summer, um, you know, for landscaping purposes. But yeah, no, it's it's unknown at this time what uh, what the full impact, the recurring impact or benefit of that's going to be. Yeah. Another follow up. Uh, what is the um, the video game and revenue so far this year or at the end of the year going to be? Go ahead, director. 2.3 million. <laughs> it, it's, it's been coming in, I'd have to look exactly, but it's coming in 10,000 ish a month, a month, which would put it around 120,000 for the year. Um, like I said, I don't have the exact number, but it's. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion. To uh, allocate the game in revenue, revenue into the uh, water fund, and sewer fund. Uh, That's agenda. Yeah. Alderman Catalano, and it's it's a great uh, great idea, but it's in a different fund, of, and so we're, we're unable to do it. But I guess Director Wilson, for a formal response, could you respond? Let's have him respond, and then we'll go to the mayor after. Go ahead. Yeah, to so, say uh, um, really, it's a two-part answer. One is. Um, that's not specifically germane to the items on the agenda, but the other part is that that was um, made by council direction a number of years ago, so it would take some uh, formative motion to do that, but we'd have to put it on a future agenda and then um, address it at that point if, if there was the uh, will of the committee to put it on a future agenda. Okay, can we put it on a future agenda? Yeah, I'll have that noted for that. Mayor, please. Are we using them? Sorry, are we using the money to help with the facade program and things like that? Director Wilson, hey, we're, the economic enhancement. That's hotel tax. Sure, uh, it, hotel tax. It, it is currently going into the tourism fund to help uh, economic development and some of those things. But so, the facade program itself is okay. out of the CIP, which 
which is so it's not directly impacting the okay, but we're, program. It's still going towards economic development. As airmarked by the council a number of years ago, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. We, I mean, we can't, we have to keep going with economic development. As stated earlier, tax, sales taxes have increased 350,000, correct? You said, what was that number you said? Yeah, year to date, they've increased 350,000. Well, compared to prior year at the exactly. same time. No, but we need, we need to keep that money. So oh. let me, if I could add to that, right? So you, we don't we see the initial, right? To, to the mayor's point, the, this money's earmarked for economic development. That is what has brought in the powerhouse of the Amazon and Altile, which is driving some of that growth. And, and we know what's coming. We have a few more major businesses that are coming to town and businesses that are going to be online. Um, so it makes sense, and, but obviously we'll talk about that adding as a future item for discussion. Thanks. Anybody else have a question? Me. Alderman Roy Wesley. Brad, how much is ODA left on the sewer treatment plant? Do you know that? Yeah, it was in the book. Director Wilson. Yeah, if you can give me a moment, I can dig that up real quick. Okay, when you're looking that up. It's I in the book. One, it's I in that audit book. book. I want to yeah, go ahead. I have yeah, we'll have him look it up. You have a follow-up question? Yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, Randall Renzi's roughly has roughly about 18 people in there now. I'm sure we could figure out a, a rough idea of what they're going to be using on water of how many people they have. So you're, is your, is your thought to take that proportion of 18 against their max occupancy and then sure. do the math to project? That's probably a dangerous thing, Brad, but is that possible? Just to at least give us an idea? You need some number. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a good place to start, so sure. Is that going to take some time, or do we need to put you on the spot here? Uh, my only question <laughs> would be I would just Future. have to... Uh, get what their max, max occupancy is, but I can get that, and then once we get that, we can reverse engineer it, that's, yeah. Okay, Alderman Woods. Yeah, that number would be easy mathematically to come up with. The problem is, when is that gonna happen? All right. Year one, two, three, four, five, we're already in year five of that development, and while we know it's coming, we still don't know when, so whatever you, number you brought up, I would temper by 50%. Thank you. Director Wilson. Sure. Uh, to Alderman uh, R. Wesley's uh, initial question, uh, the remaining principal on both of the notes for the treatment plant is about $28 million. Any other questions? And um, Director Wilson, you'll get back to us. Uh, and a rough idea, tempered, watered down number on, on what to expect potentially at a future meeting or next meeting rather? Sure. Is that something we can get before the next council meeting? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Alderman Woods? Yeah, before we leave the subject, so. If we don't do anything or raise the water in any way or account for enough water to come in uh, that isn't coming in now, uh, how many projects or at what level would we be able to do projects, right? Because those we still need to do. I, I don't think anybody disagrees. And you're saying we had 300,000. 300,000 doesn't get you too far in a, a water project. That's not even one project a year. So I don't want to fall too far behind, and that's why I brought up the, the fact of while Alderman Eugene Wesley, or Roy, sorry, apologize, Roy Wesley, brought up a good point, you know, and that money certainly is coming. We just don't know how many years out that's coming. So somewhere we need to draw those two lines and intersect. So maybe a dollar isn't the number, but 60 cents, 75 cents, it seems like something has to be put in there to keep it going until some of those other things kick in to where we can get back to doing the, the water projects that we used to do. Right. Alderman Eugene Wesley. The line we're coming right now, that other treatment plant, down the line, this bunch will come back and fire this Mayor, please. 
And that's why I said last year when we were doing the fixed cost, as the notes get paid or other things come online, you know, we could set a sunset clause or you can lower it at any time. So we've got this other building coming up in the industrial park. It's supposed to be two buildings. One of them is supposed to generate another 350,000. We can make those, but we need to keep things flowing forward. Otherwise, we're going to make the same mistakes of the past and let stuff fall down. That 350000 you're talking about additional sales tax revenue? Correct. Oh, okay. City Manager Mermis? I think that number is off. I think that was six. What's the capital here? It's 600000 not so, 300000 Oh, 600000 That's what would be coming with the new building. Wow. Okay, so obviously we have some things to keep in consideration because once those new buildings come online, that could change some things. Any other questions or comments? So Director uh, Wilson, you have some, I guess a to-do, if you could, to bring back for, for next, meeting, next meeting. Next committee meeting. Next, um, well, we can't really, yeah, I don't think there's a motion to make, to make any movement, right? We need some. Go ahead, Director Wilson. Well, so the next uh, committee meeting is the uh, January. Yeah, is the CIP meeting. Um, so I'm working my way through the CIP right now. Uh, so I mean, so to Alderman Woods's point, I mean, that night would give a lot clearer picture right. to what mm -hmm. the answer to that question. So um, mm -hmm. perhaps you, you know, so we're trying to work through it. Okay. Right. So perhaps it just gets. Uh, Somebody like to make a motion to table it until the January 3rd meeting? I'll make a motion to table it. 10th. 10th. 10th, excuse me. I'll table. make a motion to table it until we get some so uh, capital projects. Okay, we have a motion, uh, motion from Alderman Eugene Wesley, second by Alderman Szymarski. <clears throat> Anything else? Is that enough direction? We got with all in favor? Got I'm sorry. Vote. I just want to make sure you had enough direction. Is that good? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Next up, the Municipal Utility Tax, MUT, modification. Director Wilson. I make a motion to approve it. It's, it's okay. Alderman Eugene Wesley mo uh, has a motion seconded by Alderman uh, Sorrentino. All in favor? The question. Aye. Aye. I got a question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alderman Roy Wesley. On a uh, utility tax, the cell, these are cell phones too, correct? Director Wilson? Hotel tech, and there's utility tax on that? No, this is only applying to the electric bills. Just okay. Just electric. Right, and yeah. Mayor, please. And Brad, if I read this right, it was like 75, oh, there it is, $7,500 for, right? This, conclude, this goes to all the districts then, right? Director Wilson? Correct. It would be the fire district, library, park district, school. I think that's it. Right, yeah, okay. I mean, initially, uh, Fenton was included in this, but there's the obvious point that they're in Bensonville and right, Wooddale. So right, um, right. we would certainly exclude them, but there's nothing to exclude. So Could we annex them? <laughs> Any other questions? So it's, yes, it's all taxing bodies or just those? Director Wilson? Excellent question. Uh, it's just those that are listed in the memo. So why isn't the force preserve on there? There's a taxing body too. Director Wilson. That would be something that, um, you know, you could include. I mean, the initial um, inquiry came in from the fire department and in speaking um, mostly with legal, he advised that this is kind of you know, normally the core group that gets exempted, but if, you know, you know if, if you wanted to add the Forest Reserve mm -hmm. District, I mean, that would certainly be... I would say any texting body. Up, you know, the, the, the will of the, the council to do that. So that's, that's, uh, would be accept would, it would be an acceptable exemption if, uh, if we wanted to do that, so. Would the motioner be willing to... No. Okay. Well, motion passes. Okay. No. No, motion. No. The amendment no. is... Denied. Well, the amendment is denied. Regular right? motion. Yeah, the amendment is denied, but 
We had a motion, did we not? We had a motion. We, we voted motion. on the motion. Which no, no, we, no. I we, we did not question. vote yet. Okay, I thought we did. He, had the, he had the question. Okay, Eileen, could you take a formal roll call, please? Okay. On the original motion. The original motion. Pass the MUT modification. Correct. Okay, Alderman Roy Wesley. Yes. Alderman Sorrentino. Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley. Yes. Alderman Catalano. Yes. Alderman Szymarski. Yes. Alderman Messina. Yes. Alderman Woods. Yes. And that passes. Next up, the property casualty and workers compensation and insurance renewal. What's that? Right. Go ahead. That's correct. Second. <laughs> Questions? Alderman Roy Wesley. Price increases? Are there price increases? I'd like to hear the numbers from this year to that. This, from last year to this year. Please go ahead, Director. Uh, yes, there is a price increase of $38,458. As Alderman Eugene Wesley mentioned, the majority of that is due to the workers' compensation. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Director Buggy? Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Can you do a roll call on that as well, please, Eileen? Alderman Roy Wesley? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Great, and that passes. Items to be considered at future meetings. We have Alderman Catalano's um, discussion of gaming towards, uh, e or earmarking gaming dollars toward. Uh, Changing. Yeah. yeah. We'll just call it the uh, gaming revenue earmarking, uh, as well as the CIP on January 10th and the fiscal year 20 budget on February 28th. Any other future items? Good. All right. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't see him. Go ahead. I was going to say, just a point of clarity, the uh, air, video game air marking conversation um, would likely not be on January 10th. It would be on probably the second one in January. So that would be the 24th. All in Carolina? Just a future one. Yeah. So I, I know. I just, so we'll try to put dates to it. So it would probably be January 24th for the uh, video gaming air marking. Yeah, January won't happen immediately. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Eugene Wesley. One other. Jeff, I talked to you about this, about uh, changing something we have to change with the ordinance for the fire district. To, when, when will that be coming? Where will that? That's what we did. That, enc that encompassed that, what we just did. What we just, well, we just, oh, what we just did? That. Okay. I, I just, good talk. Okay. Any other items to add for future meetings? Alderman Szymarski? Good. Yeah. There is a motion to adjourn the meeting. Was there a second? I, I know. It. Yeah, I said there was, but it was I there said. a second. Okay. Alderman Woods? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned.